My game went from looking like this to this. Now there have been a lot of changes in the last three months. Now I know that I've mentioned previously that this game is going to be a roguelike. That's changed. I've recently started playing games like Hollow Knight and Haiku the Robot, and I've absolutely fell in love with the Metroidvania genre. I really want to capture what makes these games so great, the environmental storytelling and the character progression. Speaking of characters, our character finally has a name, Amber. And this name, of course, was chosen by you guys over on my Instagram. We had over 80 different suggestions, and ultimately, this ended up being your favorite. And now the character movement itself. Now, you know the way in the last video I completely overhauled the movement system? Yeah, I've done that again. But this time in a really, really big and scary way. I'm no longer keeping everything in one confined script, and I've implemented a new state machine. Now, this would not be a thing if it wasn't for the truly amazing content made by Bardent. If you haven't checked him out and you're planning on making any kind of complex character movement system, you have to watch his videos. It will be the best. Don't get me wrong, 15 hours of your life. They are long videos, but I feel like I've learned more about programming game characters from his videos than I have from all the other content I've absorbed, period. I've come out on the other side actually understanding the content and being able to implement my own ideas from it. Now, I don't go into the nuances of what a finite state machine is. Barton does a much better job of explaining it. Because of this rebump, I've been able to tick off a lot of new features that are very much essential for any kind of quality movement system, including coyote time, a jump buffer, variable jump height. So thank you so much for the suggestion, V-Boy. It made a massive difference. I recently hosted a Draw This In Your Style competition. We had some absolutely amazing submissions, but the winner, Hannah, brought me a whole new perspective on how I'm going to approach dialogue in the game. Not only did she draw the scene, but she drew the characters up close and had a detail I hadn't even thought of yet. I'm really hoping we can get her involved within the Lace T team, creating art and assets that will really define the game's core narrative going forward. As you can see, there's also a rather large difference in how the game looks as well. And that was achieved just by implementing lighting into the game. A couple months ago, I really pushed myself to learn how to actually make pixel art. Not only so I could actually create assets for this game going forward, with the help of some tutorials made by Pen USB Mike and Luigi, I managed to learn a lot about color theory and how it can really set the mood in a scene. Now, don't get me wrong, this may be a completely unorthodox way of doing it, but the way I've set up the lighting currently, I've basically just added multiple freeform lighting sprites with a large fall off and just layered those on top of each other with an alpha blend. Then we just stick a few point lights in there with a script to make them flicker and bada bing bada boom, we've got a pretty nice looking scene in my opinion. Now the most recent addition that I made just a couple days ago was also implementing a finite state machine for the enemies itself. This is going to make creating multiple enemy types so much quicker because I can essentially reuse states between different enemies depending on what they actually do. So right now I've just implemented a very basic setup where this ghoul patrols across any platform. They'll automatically patrol any length of corridor or whatever until they hit a wall or a ledge. They'll turn around and keep going. I'm going to be adding a script so they can actually attack you later on down the line. But for now, this is enough for me to get a bit of a scene going. And it gives me the prime opportunity to work on the new combat system too. There's going to be less of an emphasis on comboing attacks per se, but more with it being a Metroidvania, upgrading and unlocking new traversal and combat abilities over the course of the game and using them in different ways so you can unlock new areas of the map. Kind of like how in Hollow Knight, you can't actually get past this enemy until you unlock the Vengeful Spirit upgrade. Now, at the end of the day, you are the ones who are going to be playing this game, so you should have just as much of an input into what goes into the game as I should, if not more. What kind of abilities and what kind of systems do you want in this game? And what do you think of the new direction this game's going in? But until next time, and hopefully it won't be that long, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon.